Greetings and salutations. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, who the hell's this guy? I thought he was dead. But I'm not. I'm back. I've uh, just been dealing with a bit of stuff. Uh, but coming today to do a bit of a tutorial video in Fusion 360 uh, as a request. Uh, I'll give you a bit of details about that after the jump. I'm Garth, aka Wobot. i got a hole in my head. And this is Wobot 3D Prints. Alright, so here we are in Fusion. Uh, now this tutorial uh, came about from uh, as a request from another Garth, Lord Garth 6 on Twitter. And uh, he wanted to know how I made this kind of bent infinity loop. Uh, which I was using in a project I was working on prior to recording this video. So today I'm going to show you how to bend objects in Fusion. And there are probably a few different ways that you could make this particular object, but um, I find this particular way very handy for certain things, especially when you're not quite certain of exactly how bent something is going to need to be um, so if you can't kind of pre-sketch the curve and do an extrude uh, I find this works very well and um, you'll no doubt see why and um, get some ideas for other things for yourself I've had a few ideas of some potential torture tests that could be made with this um, so please don't blame me if Angus happens to catch onto this and decides to kill all your printers with it. It's not my fault. I'm just here to share my knowledge. So first thing we want to do is go into the patch workspace. I believe at the time that uh, Lord Garth asked me how I did it, I may have said I used the sculpt workspace, but um, I actually used the patch workspace. So we're going to the front view and we'll start a sketch. Just do it on the front plane there. And you're going to want to use a spline for this. Uh, lines obviously won't work because they don't bend. And the type of spline that you want to do, if you're not really sure, you may want to start with a straight line, but make sure that you put a few points in if you're not 100% certain on how bent you want it to be um, because if you only put a few points in um, you can add points in later but uh, if you give yourself a few to work with at least um, it tends to work a little bit better so we've got our spline we'll uh, stop the sketch go back to our home view and what I want to do is create an extrude on that spline. We'll drag it out. Uh, let's, let's just go 30 mil for now. That should be fine. A new body. Hit OK. And now what you want to do is go back to the model workspace. You probably don't have to go back to the model workspace to do this particular step, but the step after you definitely will need to. Um, I just prefer to go back before I kind of forget that I'm working in the patch workspace. So now we'll create another sketch and we'll create it on top of that surface and Again, I'm going to use the spline tool. Um, this particular part you can do with lines um, or splines. It doesn't really matter. Um, I've chosen to do splines for this because for the particular object that I'm making, it's got curves and uh, it's much better if it is done with splines. So put a moment point there and there I'll stop that one 
and this is not going to be absolutely perfect because it's quite a quick one but here's uh, our mirror tool now and actually I've just forgotten I need a center line to do that so use my line tool I'll just make a construction line right through the middle and I'm also probably don't need one for this center but I'll do it anyway so now we've got some lines to mirror around turn off the construction line and we'll grab our sketch mirror tool and we want to mirror that spline across that line and we'll hit OK and for good measure we'll repeat that again mirror so we've got those selected and this time we'll use that as the mirror line and it looks like our original spline isn't quite long enough that should be okay for the purposes of this tutorial it's not really going to matter so I might actually do just for the sake of it is if oh, not that one. If you right click on the spline, um, this is a good method if you do need to do what I said earlier about inserting a spline point to give it more bend points. You can right click and choose insert spline fit point. And I'm just going to place one there. And another one. do one on this one as well insert spline fit point put it there and then I can delete those end ones Oops. make sure I've got the point selected and not the spline because otherwise it'll delete the whole spline just move that one Oh, that's good enough. Come and see that, that'll do. And now I'll just use the line tool to close those off so we've got a nice profile. And now I'll do another spline. We'll go from center point out to there, and about there looks good. As I said, this is not going to be exact. I'll just mirror that across that line. And then we can just copy paste and move those across there. So as you can see, there's many different ways of accomplishing the same things. All right, so now we've got our spline pattern. What we want to do is stop the sketch and we want to do an extrude 
Oops, looks like our profile is underneath. That's okay. So now if we drag that up, you see it looks like a regular old extrude. But what we want to do is change this to, uh, not that one, uh, which one is it? Oh, new body. Change that one to intersect. And what that will do is leave us with a cutout pattern of the patch. Now, it might not look like much of a solid object, but the beautiful thing about Fusion is you can use the thicken function and select the body and you just drag it out to whatever thickness you want. Now, depending on your object, if you find that one side of it or one corner of it doesn't seem to thicken the same as the other points, because um, generally when you want to thicken something you want it to thicken evenly all the way around, um, but occasionally you might find that one part of it will thicken a little more than the other. If that happens, switch it from one side to symmetric and you'll find that it'll thicken both sides evenly. Um, so we'll click on new body. So now we've got our body. It's a fully 3D object. Now what we can do is if we go over to our sketches and we unhide the spline. Now if we drag the spline points around, it actually bends the object. So you can then manipulate it into any particular form you want. Now obviously you probably need to be a little bit careful um, of the actual shape that you've cut out because bending it will deform that shape to some degree. Um, so it, it is generally a good idea that if you have a rough idea of the shape that you want something to be, that you draw your original spline around that kind of shape and then you can kind of just tweak it from there. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. You can do some pretty amazing things. And as you can see, you can get some rather complex geometry out of it. Um, the original infinity curve that I made was really just a kind of upward arc. I think, uh, drag that one down there. And yeah, you can see it's kind of cut it off there. This sort of thing will happen depending on how much you deform the spline. Um, that's why I said if you if you know roughly the shape that you're after initially, it's better to do that and do small tweaks because um, obviously it can cause odd little deformities like that. But um, yeah, you can see that when I move, it's kind of like I'm shortening the actual patch and as I shorten it, it kind of cuts off the pieces as I move it further and further back. If we stretch it right back out and go back to our side view, we should be able to drag it down to the same point without losing too much of it. I might have to extend it a bit, but as you can see it has stretched it a bit as well. Um, So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. 
All right, and before I wrap up this video, I just want to give a couple of shout outs to some awesome people who kind of blew my mind. First of which being Heather, uh, Dee Dee Heather from Three Pink Mafia. And she printed a part for the um, Friday Three Print Chat group uh, logo that they put together for Earth. Uh, I haven't really had the funds to do anything like that because um, it would obviously require sending it to America and that would have cost me quite a bit. So she offered to print it and absolutely blew my mind by tweeting a picture of the part printed with my logo on it, which I cannot thank you enough for. So thank you very much, Heather. You can find details on Heather's Twitter uh, in the description below, and um, you can find her on uh, Community Ketchup, and I'll put links to that in the description as well. And this is the Friday 3D Printing Community Hangout logo that was put together, and there's my little piece there and that was all constructed at earth which was absolutely massive i saw a shot of it in somebody's boot and or in their car rather sticking out the end of the boot so i don't think it fit in properly so that was absolutely awesome so many people took part and it just looks fantastic so awesome shout outs to everyone for being so cool and taking part in that and another shout out I have to give to Alkesh1 on Twitter for blowing my mind after we <laughs> had a off the cuff chat during uh, Calvin's stream or Calvin and Jimmy's stream last week I woke up to find pictures of this 3D print in my Twitter feed and Wow, talk about awesome. I could not believe it. He's got a couple of pictures of it during the printing process. Um, absolutely blew my mind. Now, Cash One's the, he's been making variants of the, uh, the gnome model, and that was kind of how this originated. Uh, he mentioned making like a Wobot gnome. Um, and yeah, next day I woke up to find that. And uh, I am working on a sort of more official Wobot model. Uh, I'm doing it in three, Fusion 360 and it'll be a little more detailed. Not sure if it'll be completely suitable for FDM printing yet, but um, we'll see. Um, but yeah, given I've got a DLP printer, it's not really going to make that much of a difference to me, but uh, I'll be tweeting pictures of that out once I've got it done and um, so yeah big humongous thank you to Alkesh1 for that I was extremely honored to wake up and find that it really blew my mind and so yeah go and check out some of his other stuff it is absolutely killer all right well that's about it for this video uh, once again massive shout outs to those awesome people just mentioned and uh, details of where they can be found uh, down below in the description and of course massive shout outs to you for sticking around and watching my video and if you've got any requests or anything you'd like to know how to do um, in fusion perhaps uh, just drop a comment below and I'll see what I can do and don't forget to like or subscribe and uh, I'll catch you next time see ya